Hello! Now let us talk about butter bread and butter cake. Now let's start with the characteristics and specifications of both butter bread and butter cake. You may ask, what are the ingredients needed for butter bread? Firstly, we have flour, eggs, sugar, salt, yeast, margarine, water, butter, milk powder, and lastly, dough conditioner. Yay! Now what about butter cake? Well, the ingredients are vanilla extract, eggs, butter, sugar, flour, baking powder, and milk. Now let's move on to the water activity and pH of the butter cake and butter bread. Well, let us start with the cake first. The water activity of the butter cake is around 0 0.9 to 0 0.95 with a pH of 6.6 to 7.1. As for bread, the water activity is 0 0.9 to 0 0.97 with its pH ranging from 5 to 6.2. Now, what are the storage conditions of the bakery products? They were made in duplicates and packed in a Ziploc bag, whereby one sample was stored in the fridge and another in room temperature. Let us look into the common ingredients of the bakery products and their functions. Firstly, we have butter. Butter not only can give pleasant fragrance and texture to the bakery products and can resist bacterial action. Next thing on the list is sugar. Sugar not only helps yeast to begin producing gas, for dough rising action and it can also reduce water activity. However, microbes will also feed on the sugar for metabolism. Lastly, we have eggs and flour. Eggs can emulsify fat with liquid ingredients and it's also a good protein source for microbes to grow. As for flour, it is rich in carbohydrates, hence it can act as a food for microbial growth. Now let us move on to the types of food spoilage and the microorganisms involved. Food spoilage is a natural process that results in undesirable changes that occurs in the food. Well, food spoilage can be detected usually by sight, smell, taste, and texture. The types of food spoilage can be categorized into physical, chemical, and microbial whereby our main focus will be on microbial spoilage. Microbial spoilage can be divided into bacterial spoilage, mold spoilage, and lastly, yeast spoilage. Well, among these three types of spoilage, mold growth is a major concern for bakery products. The reason why it's a major concern is because the mold growth 
is visible to the naked eye, whereas bacterial spoilage is not. Now, let's take a look at the samples placed in room temperature for 4 days. The mold growth on the samples are clearly visible. Although the bakery products might look fresh, but bacteria may have contaminated the food by producing spores and toxins. Most molds, especially xerophilic molds, can survive lower water activities as compared to bacteria. Bakery products that are freshly baked are usually microbe-free, as they are inactivated or killed during the baking process. The most common isolated genera from spoiled bread is penicillin. It can grow in a wide range of temperatures, with preference to cooler temperatures, and it can produce spores. Next, we have Aspergillus that produces aflatoxin. Other species include Eurotium, Cladosporium, Mucor, Rhizopus, Neurospora, and Monilia cytophilia. Bakery products are less susceptible to bacteria attack due to the low water activity and low pH present in the baked goods. Bacteria generally grow best if the water activity is above 0.9. The spoilage on bakery products is also known as rope spoilage. Rope is commonly caused by bacillus species which include bacillus subtilis, Bacillus lichenformis, Bacillus megatherium, and Bacillus cereus. Initially, this spoilage is characterized by a distinctive, sweet and unpleasant odor similar to that of a rotting pineapple. Later, the loaf becomes sticky to touch, soft and discolored. The spoilage can first become noticeable in 12 to 24 hours. Now, yeast spoilage can be detected by the visible growth of yeast on the product surface which will look like white, cream or pink patches on the product. The strains of yeast includes chalk yeast such as Zygosaccharomyces bile, Saccharomycopsis fibuligera, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and lastly, Picia brutoni. The most common strain would be Picia brutoni, and this is because it is more resistant to preservatives and disinfectants than many others. Other yeasts have also been isolated on bakery products, which include Candida species, Hansonula anomala, and lastly, Debaromyces hansoni. Now, let's move on to the detection and indicators of these microorganisms. There are several methods used to detect bacterial growth. 
Firstly, the sweet, fruity odor that is similar to a rotting pineapple. Second, the crumb becomes discolored, soft, and sticky to touch. Also, by using API 50 CHB system for gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Furthermore, we can use real time PCR. Other than that, we can use biosurfactant producing strain on blood agar plate. And lastly, there is streaking on mannitol egg yolk polymycin. And that's it! Now mold and yeast can be detected by visible growth, which is only applicable to mold. Whereby penicillin will show green colonies, aspergillus and rhizobus show black colonies, cladosporium show olive green colonies, Neurospora show pink colonies. And lastly, mucor shows grey colonies. Another method would be potato dextrose agar, which is used to detect fungi. It is incubated aerobically at 22 degrees Celsius for 5 days. And it also has to be acidified, as it lowers the pH of the agar. Factors that affect the growth of microorganisms Now let us start with extrinsic factors. Temperature is one of the extrinsic factors. The danger zone for most of the microbes to grow is from 5 to 6 to 3 degrees Celsius. As bakery products are usually stored in room temperature, microbes can grow actively and cause food spoilage. The presence of other microbes is also a factor. This is because other microbes will compete for nutrients in attachment sites with spoilage microbes and produce bacteriocytes to kill or inhibit the growth of spoilage microbes. Third, oxygen content in atmosphere is also a factor. Most of the spoilage microbes are aerobes that favor oxygen. Therefore, if we keep the bakery products in aerobic conditions, both aerobes and facultative anaerobes can grow and cause spoilage. Lastly, relative humidity can also affect microbial growth. Microbes need water for metabolism and hence less microbial growth can be observed in dry atmosphere compared to moist environments. Now let's turn our heads to intrinsic factors. Firstly, pH is one of the intrinsic factors. Most microbes get inhibited at low and high pH. However, fungi can grow over a wider pH range. Water bioavailability in food is another factor. The lower the water activity, the longer the shelf life because water encourages microbial growth.
Reducing the water activity below 0.6 prevents microbial spoilage. However, other deteriorative reactions can still occur. Another intrinsic factor is the structure of the bakery products, which is porous. This makes the penetration of spoilage microbes to be easier. Nutrient content of bakery products is also a factor. Spoilage microbes require a range of nutrients such as water, energy source, nitrogen, vitamins and minerals to survive. Carbohydrates is the main ingredient for both cake and bread. Therefore, it acts as a source of carbon and nitrogen to promote the growth of spoilage microbes. The sources of contamination include air and dust of the storage surroundings. The air surrounded us is full of spoilage microbes. Besides, equipment and utensils used when handling bakery products are also a cause of food spoilage if they are not clean. For example, knives, spoons, and containers. Pests such as cockroaches, flies, and ants might be another concern if we don't store the bakery products well. They might be in contact with the bakery products or even the ingredients such as wok or laid eggs in the food. Spoilage microbes can also be transferred from food handlers who did not practice good hygiene. The skin, mucous membranes, cuts, open sores, or a skin infection of humans can serve as reservoirs of pathogens. For example, Staphylococcus aureus. Packaging of the bakery products is another concern because of the potential transfer of spoilage microbes to the packed food. Contamination can also occur via storage in the market in contaminated bins and other containers. Now let us discuss about the several preservation techniques that are commonly used in bakery products. Firstly, we have propionic acids, which are calcium propionate and sodium propionate. Both acids strongly inhibit mold and retards growth of bacteria that causes rope. However, it reduces the activity of yeast in the dough. Hence, a higher yeast level and longer proof time is needed for yeast to produce gas during baking. Calcium propionate is used in bread, while sodium propionate is used in cakes. Now let's move on to sorbic acid, which naturally occurs in several plants. Its chemical derivative, potassium sorbate aids in preventing mold growth on bakery products, and it's safe to consume. Next up, acidic acid, which is used traditionally to prevent rope in the form of vinegar. One example is sodium diacetate, which retards mold growth on bakery products. Another example is calcium acetate, which is more effective in inhibiting rope compared to calcium propionate. Another approach is modified atmosphere packaging, which uses a high concentration of carbon dioxide, which retards the growth of molds on bakery products. However, this approach shows a higher incidence of chalk mold spoilage caused by yeast. Another approach is to use oxygen-absorbing materials to reduce oxygen concentration in the pack. This method keeps bread free of mold growth and also prevents aerobic bacteria. Lastly, storing the bakery products in refrigerator creates a low temperature surrounding, which is below 4 degrees Celsius to inhibit the growth of more spoilage microbes.